You need a bib? Maybe you I need a bib. <laughs> Sorry. She. What are you doing? She'll see you all up and can't take you nowhere. It wouldn't come out? <laughs> it wouldn't come out? No. Except on my shirt. <laughs> I'm sorry, we didn't have any water down there. Uh, I would have gave you some of mine, but... It's I all right. It's all right. <laughs> Try to get a hold of yourselves. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> I think. I knew I should have put it in the top. I want to look competent. Sound that way too. Yeah. Is that on now? You're coming through loud and clear. You can't hear me? Yes. I said it's it on now? Yeah. Yes. I'll have to holler soon. You got 20 minutes. Hard hit it. Jerry, you had uh, the poem that you wrote after you got saved. Mm -hmm. Would you come read that now? This was his first one. Back in 1980, I was sitting on my couch where I was working in an apartment property. Me and a couple friends, Jack, Daniels, and Ginger Ale. They were over. They're not friends anymore. Amen. But... The more we sat and talked about life and reminisced about life, you know, I kind of got comfortable. And these words just started flowing. And um, it's not a bad poem now. It's just you have to open your It opened my imagination to life. It says, it's called, Have You Ever? Have you ever taken a dream and lived it your way? Have you ever set to count the years in a day? Have you ever followed a golden stream around its winding bend, or rode an arching rainbow until its never end? Have you ever heard a flower cry when picked by a little child? Have you ever felt an autumn breeze as it blew your way so mild? Have you ever flown so high and free like an eagle free and bold? Have you ever heard the crickets sing and tell the story they told? Have you ever caught an angel's tear before it hit the ground? Have you ever sat to listen but never heard a sound? Have you ever walked the moonlit beach and touched the stars above? Have you ever heard the whisper of God's eternal love? Mm -hmm. Have you ever taken life's fantasies as if they were in a dream and lived them as life's realities, how, oft, how real they often seem? Have you ever taken the mysteries of death and turned their darkness to light or took the time to live your life and make it seem so right? Have you ever? I have. For life with all its fantasies and death a mere reality is just a mild illusion we see as if we were in a dream. Thank you. Praise Very God. good. Praise the Lord. Okay. Have you ever? Open your Bibles, please, to... Uh, we're going to start where, where we ended at Sunday School, Barbara. Uh, 2 Corinthians, chapter 7. 2 Corinthians, chapter 7. Verse 14. <laughs> verse 14. We're going to read a verse or two seven, here, and then I'm going to ask you a question. Um, seven. Let's see what... In Sunday School, all of us got an A, according to Barbara. So we're going to see if the congregation is going to get an A now or flunk. If you flunk, you have to move to the back of the room, stay after school. Ernie, would you be kind enough to open us with prayer? Yes. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to give you praise and glory. And yes, Lord. Just for being with us this morning. Lord, you just blessed us truly. And we give you thanks, praise, glory, and honor for it. And Father, now as uh, Ken brings the message, we ask, Lord, that you just fill us full and run it over. And we'll just give you praise, glory, and honor for it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Did everyone get there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Second verse 14. 
if my people, which are called by my name, that's us, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's us. Wait a minute. Where are you at? Second Chronicles. Uh, second, second Chronicles, oh, Chronicles chapter seven. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I might have. He I did. often confuse those. Yeah. Oh, I meant Chronicles. Oh, sorry. He second was. Chronicles. Yeah. Okay, now start your windmill going again. See if you can right. find it. Chapter seven. <clears throat> I've been known to do that. Got it. Seven fourteen. Chapter 7, verse 4. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now the question is, who is that written to? Us. <coughs> my people, his people. Who is it written to? The church. Church. People. church. Who is it written to? God's Israel. Israel. Who Jews. specifically in Israel? It's Jews. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. Now, every one of you were right, but I wanted to, you to specifically see this for a reason. This is written through to Solomon, through Solomon to Israel. Okay? Yes. So it couldn't apply to us. So we're confessing something we shouldn't confess. Oh. I mean, we end up with that dilemma with a whole lot of the promises and things of God that, that uh, Bible scholars will tell you, this was written to this and this, and they're right insofar as they go. This is written to Israel. But go with me to Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. <clears throat> Did you know? Are you listening? Yeah. Just finding Isaiah 5 cut off your ears? No. Look intelligent now. That means wake up, Al. <laughs> yep, I'm Ah, there we go. I want that handsome young man looking at me. I was looking. I know you were, but I want you to look at me. I'm that vain. Alexander the Great, Al, took the throne at age 20 and by the age of 33 had conquered the known world. Julius Caesar, at a young age, captured 800 cities, conquered 300 nations, and 3 million men, and was an orator and a statesman. George Washington was an adjutant general for the, for the British at age 19. <laughs> at age 22, he was ambassador to treat with the French, and he won his first battle as a colonel at age 22. Lafayette, you remember Lafayette? Talked with him last week, didn't you? Lafayette was a general of the whole French army by the time he was 20. Charlemagne, you've heard of Charlemagne, was the master of France and Germany at age 30. Galileo saw the principle of the pendulum in a, a light hanging in the Pisa and postulated his theories at 18. Peel, I never heard of Peel, at 21 was in Parliament. Gladstone, I have heard of Gladstone, was in the Parliament at 22 and at age 24 became Lord of the Treasury. Luther at age 29, nailed his theses to the cathedral door and defied the Pope. Shakespeare was in his mid-30s when he wrote many of his masterpieces. But, <coughs> Matt, Matt Dillon killed at least one guy every week, <laughs> five days a week, for 20 plus years. That's 5,200 men. <laughs> but that's nothing. Captain James T. Kirk, <laughs> who had a starship with 400 people on board, got one in a red suit. You remember the security detail? One killed every, every program, at least one killed every program, sometimes five or ten, so that by the time his five-year mission was up, there couldn't have been anybody on board that thing. <laughs> but the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew 28, 18, said all power has been given to me. Amen. All power 
has Amen. been given to me. And so we're in Isaiah chapter 5. Now I will say, verse 1, Now will I sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. In the Song of Solomon, if you read that, you want to read a, a truly heart melting book. Uh, Bible theologians, uh, many, tell us that that's Solomon and his wife uh, courting one another and so forth. But I believe it's the Lord Jesus Christ and his church. Yeah. And, uh, and that's the spiritual meaning behind it to me. He, sa he says, uh, my beloved, uh, uh, 32 times in the short six chapters. Uh, now I will sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard and a very fruitful hill. I believe this is Jesus talking to the Father or Father talking to Jesus. And he fenced it. Now you know what a fence is, don't you? <laughs> he fenced it and gathered out of the stones thereof. That means he got the rocks out of the garden and planted it with the choicest vine. He selected the best. Annette has found this year that the uh, uh, one of the tomato plants that she is, is doing great, real well. Which one is it? Better boy. Better boy. And the other one, what's the other one? Early girl. Early girl isn't worth a toot. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if there's any simple message behind that or not, but the early girl, it didn't do too well. And planted it. It wouldn't have done if he hadn't planted it. I said it had to be planted. Yes. Amen. With the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst. He wants it protected. Fence and a tower. And also made a wine press therein. He's expecting a crop. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't build a wine press if you weren't expecting a crop. Would you agree with that? Amen. Amen. The question in the back of my mind is who's he talking to? It's always right to ask who he's talking to. And I maintain he's talking about Israel. And verse 7, you'll see that spelled out. But I maintain also he's talking to the church, yes. to yes. us yes. today, that this applies to us, yes. specifically America. Specifically the country that we just prayed for. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> he built a tower in the midst and made a wine press there, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Mm -hmm. Now, wild doesn't sound too bad. I've eaten wild grapes, that is, grapevines that haven't been tended for a while, and they're not that bad. And, and I, but, but, you know, for somebody that's going to make wine, they're real particular about the quality of their grapes. Amen. They want to make sure that those grapes are the best from the choicest vine. They, they really do. And uh, in Georgia, we have growing wild things called muscadines. I don't know if you've ever heard, ever heard of them. It's a wild grape, and they were delicious. And, uh, and we had another one. Um, uh, scuppernum. Scuppernum. A scuppernum. You can get those in South Carolina. They're, they're, Food Line has them from time to time. They're delicious, too. They're a wild grape. And, uh, and so, but I looked this word up at, and spent some time in my word lexicons to and, and it means a stinking grape. <laughs> it means one that really stinks. That's what it means. And so, uh, I mean, if you're doing all that work, preparing the ground, moving it, planting it, torch of vines and wine press fence and everything, and, and what you get is something that stinks, that's not too good, is it? No. That's not, that's not the, the desire of your heart. Hey, verse 3, And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard. What could I have done more? What more could I have done? What else could I do to my vineyard that I have not done? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, it brought forth stinking grapes. <laughs> now, he's, making a, he's, he's outlining his problem with whoever he's talking about. I've done everything that I knew to do. What happened? Verse 5. And now, come is what it means. Go to, come. I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. Oh. Listen carefully. I will take away the hedge thereof. That's the fence. And it shall be eaten up. 
and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. It's one thing to break it down, it's another to trod on it. If, if it's broken down, then it's vulnerable, the, the patch is vulnerable, but if it's trodden on, that means folks are walking around on it, right? Right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Verse 6. And I will lay it waste. This is what Father says he's going to do to his vineyard that stinks. I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned. Ernie, you know something about pruning. Uh, we have a peach tree volunteer peach tree out here that a groundhog buried the seed and it sprang up a good peach tree many years later. And it has right good grapes, but we haven't pruned it in a while. The, the grapes now, uh, the peaches now are little bitty things. Little thing. If you don't prune the that you get a whole lot of little ones instead of some big good ones, you know. Uh, they're not they're not very good. I will lay it waste, and it shall not be pruned nor digged. You, you ever been? My daddy felt that I was born to hold a hoe. <laughs> I, I don't believe he knew that I spoke to it, it, shovel for digging more field line in that Georgia red clay, but then a hoe. And he had a garden patch out back, and he. he you had to hoe that thing. Now you, you turkeys up here, you don't have to hoe. You, I mean, your ground is just, just shale. That's soft compared to Georgia red clay. You think it's hard. No. When y'all were building the steps over here, Jerry brought over his uh, motorized post hole digger thing. And uh, when that thing, thing hit the shale, it, two men hardly couldn't hold it, could they? That's mean. If it wasn't Georgia red clay, it, <laughs> he wanted me to hoe the garden all the time. Hoe the garden, hoe the garden. Nor dig, but there shall come up briars and thorns. Anybody can agree with that? Yeah. I will also command the clouds that they rain no more. Ooh, well, no more rain. Mm -hmm. You know, briars and thorns grow without rain. It's the vegetables that don't want to. Isn't that true? Yeah. I, yeah. Whew, the judgment of God. Mm, no rain. This is likened to rain. The Holy Spirit is likened to rain. The latter rain. Yes. The water of life. Yes. You know? Uh, no rain. Anytime there was no rain, it was a result of judgment in the Bible. Judgment. Verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Oh, now you know who he's writing it right yeah. to. You see that? Mm -hmm. The house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. He looked for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Now hold your finger there and go with me to Psalms 80. Psalms, say Psalms 80. Psalms 80. Psalms 80. Psalms 80. Psalms 80. Psalms 80. You remember the Lord giving a parable in uh, uh, Matthew about the workers in the vineyard? Yeah. Remember that parable? Yeah. That goes hand in hand with this too. And, uh, and so, but, but we'll, we'll read this now. Psalms 80, beginning in verse 8. <coughs> thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. Thou preparest room before it, and didst cause it to take deep root, and it filled the land. <coughs> this, he's talking about Jerusalem. He's talking about Israel. He's talking about his children. The hills were covered with the shadow of it, and the boughs thereof were like goodly cedars. She sent out her boughs into the sea and her branches into the river. But why hast thou then broken down her hedges so that they all which pass by, pass by the way, do pluck her fruit? Pluck her means her fruit. They, the boar out of the wood doth waste it and the wild beast out of the field doth devour it. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. And the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted, who's sitting at my father's right hand? The Lord Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Which thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou madest strong for thyself, it burned, it is burned with fire and is cut down. Look at verse 18. So will not we go back from thee? 
quicken us. That means revive us. Revive us. And we will call upon thy name. Return us. That The word means restore. Restore us again, O Lord God of hosts, because and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Amen. I'm telling you right now, uh, if you've read Rabbi uh, Jonathan Kahn's <laughs> book on Harbor Harbinger, and uh, he focuses on Isaiah 9, 10, where the hedge and the walls are broken down and the people try to replant and rebuild in defiance of God as opposed to repenting. Uh, that, that word we read over there, if my people will repent and turn from their wicked way. Right now, America's under judgment. Yes. Amen. yes. I mean, we're under judgment. And you know we deserve it. Yes. We murder our own babies. We take our kids in school and teach them that sodomy is okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kick the prayer out and bring the monsters in. Mm -hmm. Demons. Yeah. And, and uh, we're, we're, we're teaching them all the stuff that they shouldn't be taught and none of the stuff that they should be taught. Right. Mm -hmm. The education system is a wreck. The courts are a wreck. Congress is a wreck. We've got to have the hand of God on this. Yeah. You and I can't hoe that all down. We can't dig up all the weeds. God the Holy Ghost has to do this. He's the pruner. Amen. He Listen to him in Song of Solomon. You don't have to turn there. It's just the next book over uh, in front of Isaiah. Jesus says in, in chapter 2, verse 1, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. Mm. Yeah. In chapter 4, verse 5, he says, Thy two breasts, I know this is this is graphic. Thy two breasts, Psalms 23, 4, says thy rod and thy staff. The, the word and the spirit, that's the two breasts that nourish us. The rod and the staff. Are you listening? Yes. Did I, go, did I shame you out of the, the, These two are like two young rows that are twins which feed among the lilies. In 6.3 he says, when you read uh, the seven chapters, I said six, seven chapters, eight, eight chapters of Psalm of Solomon, remember to read it in the spirit. Right. Read it in the spirit or, or right. you, you, you just have trouble. And right. 6.3, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. He feedeth among the lilies. God sang over you this glorious song mm -hmm. of his love and adoration for you. He wrote that thing for you to be encouraged. Rise up, my beloved, and come away. The, the, the sound of the turtle dove. You know, he's ready to rapture us. It could happen at any minute. At any minute. Amen. I don't want to go and leave the country in this affair. It means there are a whole lot of people that won't go. I'm asking you to stop being so anxious to be raptured right now that you get a panic in your spirit to go after the people around us that won't be. Yes. Because what they'll be left for isn't worth, it isn't something that's pretty to go through. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. You and I are here now. We're here now to pray for and intercede like Daniel was at his time for his nation, right. for our nation. I, yes, pray for the world, specifically Israel. But pray for America. America's the breadbasket of the gospel to the rest of the world. No wonder Satan hurts it so. Right. Hates it so and hurts it so. Amen. Right. So we I catch myself and Anna doing that. We're ready to go. We're, 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 I just want to go. We should come back right now. Just pull the one right now. And in our Bible studies this evening and Wednesday night, we'll be going into that in great detail for several months yet, most likely. But but uh, the Holy Ghost is asking me to to stay on board and to go to work. Right. Go to work. Right. Do the work. Right. He left us here. He's equipped us to do the work. Right. We're supposed to do the work. Don't be so heavenly minded you're no earthly good. Right. You heard that expression? It's impossible. Yeah. But, but don't be so wrapped up in leaving that you forget that there's a reason why you're here. Right. Amen. When my dear, 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 dear sister Frances Walker, uh, Peggy's uh, uh, mother, aunt, uh, sister, grand, Peggy's aunt, Janet's sister. Janet is Peggy's mother. Frances was Janet's sister. When she went to the nursing home, she was at first bitter. 
She didn't want to go to the nursing home. Uh, she was driving all the way in her 90s, wasn't she? And drove too fast. Macaroni. I didn't hear that. Doc dropped his head, you dropped your head. <laughs> anyway, uh, you'll probably have to fuss at me when I get there with you. Uh, but but um, she said, why am I here? I said, look, and we stood there in the hall. I said, look at all those people. I said, how many of them know Jesus? She said, oh, probably not many. I said, that's why you're here. She needed the care that the nursing home could give her, but there was a reason why he hadn't called her. If he hasn't called you and you're still here, you got a job. I see if one of you start rising, I'm going to grab your foot. But, but uh, we're here for a reason, and the reason is to pray and intercede and get America back on course, and then we can leave Amen. with billions of us. We can have a revival like Nineveh had. Do you remember Nineveh the, from the chief king to the street sweeper? They all repented. Now later on, the next generations went awry, but... But we got to have that kind of revival, saints. Yes. We can't yes. just go up, go flying out of here. Are you listening? Yes. Next time I say I just want out of here, I want you to punch me. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, I'm done with you. You can. You can just get would, would you listen to this one one thought, and then you can. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Proverbs 29, 29 verse 18. Oh, you guys are good. Yeah, you got the train I want you to have a vision. Amen. Have a vision. We are here to work to get people saved and baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then heal. And then deliver if need be. Amen. Amen. Okay. When Jesus said, now, all those ten names of people that I read to you that had done wonderful things in their early life and so forth, Jesus, by the time he was 34, 33, had all the power of God and turned around and said, I'm giving you that power. Tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you get the power from on high. Amen. I want you endued with my power. Why? When he left, did he want us to have his power so we could turn the world upside down for him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the first century church did, and several centuries after that, and then we entered what, something called the Dark Ages, and, and then we started having revivals here and there. Knox and Finney and uh, Luther and his Reformation. And they, they were some, but we need it now, today, for this hour, more than any time in history. There are more people alive today than all of previous history. And so, I think that's right. And so, uh, Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. What's the law? The law is the royal law, the law of love, that you and I are supposed to love other people more than we love ourselves and go to work together. Amen. Are you listening? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now you're good. <laughs> Let's pray for us. Father, we, we love you so much, and we need you so much. And, and you told us that if we pray and repent and seek your face, you'd save our land. Amen. Father, we promise, we, we do repent. Somebody say amen. amen. We do repent. We repent of our selfishness and our greed and our jealousy and our pettiness and, and all those flaws of our old nature and our character. And we ask you, Lord, to help us change from that glory to your glory. Yes. Grow us, Lord, please. Yes, Lord. Yes. Grow us, Lord. We feel the chastening hand on our, on our land, Lord. And, and we're desperate, Father, yes. to see it turned around. Yes. Father, I confess that there may be some selfishness in me regarding this because I, the country's been so wonderful to live in. I, I don't want to have to live in it when it's not wonderful. So I confess that to you, that there is some selfishness. Yes. But, Lord, don't pay any attention to that in me. But come after us. And, and overwhelm us. And if I'm reluctant to move, Lord, uh, give me a good swift kick. And have your way with all of us, Lord. Yes. 
Drive us, Father, in Jesus' holy name. Everybody said amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you.